video, I'm gonna explain your credit score, and this is so important, because it impacts so many areas of your life. It can impact getting a job, the interest rates you get on loans, like a mortgage, a car loan, credit card interest rate. It impacts your car insurance rates and how much you pay for deposits when getting things like cable or cell phone plan. It can determine if you're able to qualify to rent a place to live. It literally touches so many areas of your life. In this video, I'm gonna break it down and explain your credit score quickly and easy. So let's jump right in. Hey everyone, this is Lauren Mack with Hacking the Rat Race, and I would love for you to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos on money, saving, and investing. Like I said in this video, I'm gonna quickly and easily explain your credit score, how to keep your credit score up, which will make your life easier, and by keeping things cheaper, you'll have more money to get out of the rat race. There are five different sections that make up your credit score, and I'm gonna go through each one, explain how they work, and I'll give you a few hacks on how to increase each section so you can get the highest credit score possible. There's no reason why you shouldn't have an excellent credit score once you know how your credit score works. But before we jump into each section of your credit score, it's important to note that there are three credit bureaus that your credit is reported to. That's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And not all creditors report to all three of them, in fact, there are no rules dictating which bureaus a creditor reports to or what they have to report. Therefore, a creditor could report only good things or only negative items. Another might report all three, report negative and not positive items. There is no standardization. That's why it's very important that you pull your free credit report every year. Your credit report is not the same as your credit score. In fact, when you pull your credit report, unless you pay extra, you generally won't get your credit score. There are a couple of ways to get a free credit score. Some credit cards offer this as a benefit. NerdWallet offers a free credit score every week, I believe. Or if you apply for a mortgage or car loan, you could ask the lender pulling your credit to provide it to you. Another thing to note is that since there is not a rule dictating which credit bureau a creditor reports to, each credit bureau agency will most likely have a different credit score. Depending on the lender, they'll decide how or if they will use them. Some take the middle score, others will average them. It just depends. But this is why it's important to pull all three credit reports each year to make sure they are accurate and correct any negative items because this can have a massive impact on your credit score. Just to give you an idea of the credit score ranges, let's look at Experian's credit score range. 800 to 850 is exceptional. 740 to 799 is very good. This is the lowest range you wanna be in and preferably the higher side of this range to pay the lowest interest rates and fees on various things. So 670 to 739 is good. 580 to 669 is fair. And 300 to 579 is poor. You can also see the percentages of people in the United States who fall into each one of these categories. This way you're able to just get a glimpse of maybe where your credit score falls in line, maybe a target that you're shooting for. Now, let's go through each of the five sections of your credit score. The first section is payment history. This is 35% of your credit score, which is the largest and honestly the easiest to control. And all you have to do is make your payments on time. So if you have to link with payments, then get the payments caught up as soon as possible and make sure they're on time. As a side note, having a late payment on your credit report means over 30 days late. If your payments say 10 days late, you can always call the creditor and maybe you have to pay a late fee, but that doesn't mean it'll be reported to the credit bureau until after 30 days late. If you have a payment that's more than 30 days late and it's your first late payment, you can always call the creditor, say, hey, look, I'm sorry, this doesn't normally happen. Can you please remove the late payment from my credit report? And in good faith, 99% of the time, they'll remove it. If this is a reoccurring problem, then they probably won't, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Something else to mention here is if you're experiencing a minor setback, for example, like a job loss, call your creditor immediately and explain your situation. Oftentimes they can help you with delaying the payment, getting you a payment plan, something so you don't have to have a delinquent payment on your credit. I would do this as soon as you think there could be an issue because it's best to get up front with these things and keep your credit score up. 
Remember, this is 35% of your credit score. So your number one goal when working on your credit score and building your credit score is making sure your payments are always on time. The second section of your credit score is credit utilization. And this makes up 30% of your credit score. This is the area where people get dinged the most because they don't understand how it works. In fact, a lot of people don't even realize this is part of their credit score. Credit utilization only focuses on revolving credit like credit cards, store cards, not installment loan like a car payment, student loan, any kind of payments you make regularly all the time. Credit utilization is how much of your available credit limit on your revolving credit that you use. Let's use an example of someone who has a credit card of $10,000 of available credit limit. If they have a $7,000 balance on that credit card, then that's a 70% credit utilization. Oftentimes people think putting $7,000 on a 10,000 card limit is great because it's not maxed out. It's not even close to maxed out. This is true, but per the credit bureaus, it's really important to have a low credit utilization. The rule of thumb is below 30%, but oftentimes it's best if it's below 7% or less. That would mean that if you have a $10,000 available credit limit, you shouldn't have more than $3,000 on it. Or if you want to be safe and get excellent credit score, then no more than $700 on that card. Credit utilization is calculated on a card by card basis, but it's also looked at as a whole. So it looks at the credit utilization of all your revolving credit combined. So it's a good idea to keep all of your revolving credit lines low. If this is an area that could be impacting you, then the best way to fix this is to pay down your credit card debt. If you pay your credit card debt and keep it down, that's the best way to score high points in this area. And you might be thinking, Lauren, I am just learning about this. I don't have enough money to pay it down right now. And if that's the case, there is another option, which would be to call and ask to have your available credit limit raised. If you decide to do this, it's very important that you do this wisely. Do not raise your credit limit and then spend more money on your credit card because it will continue to hurt your credit. Let's look at an example we had earlier. If we had $7,000 with a $10,000 available credit limit, then we have a 70% credit utilization. But let's say you call and you're able to bring it up to $21,000 of available credit limit. And now you're looking at a 30% credit utilization, which is probably the highest that you should have and you didn't have to pay down your balance. You can also use a combination of raising your available credit limit, then paying down to 30% or lower from that amount. If you're unable to raise your credit limit and or pay down your balance, then at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a credit score hack that will help bring your credit utilization down, bring your credit score way up. So stay tuned to the end. Just to recap, if you only implemented the first two sections I've described above, that is a total of 65% of your credit score. That is more than half. So both of these sections are very important. Quickly, if you're learning a lot, I would love it if you could like this video. It costs nothing and does so much for this channel. The third section of your credit score is length of credit history, which is 15% of your credit score. Length of credit history is how long you've had your longest line of credit, but also when you get a new line of credit, they factor that in as well. However, if you keep your oldest line of credit open as long as possible, it really keeps this part of your credit score up. Oftentimes people start paying off debt, investing, getting out of the rat race, and they think they should close accounts on credit cards because they won't need them anymore and they won't be tempted to spend on it. The problem is when you close your longest line of credit, you can really hurt your credit score. It is only 15%, but it's still 15%. What I recommend is paying it off and then setting up one small reoccurring debit on it each month so it keeps it active. Having the credit card set up to automatically pay the full balance every month, this really helps your credit score because you have on-time payments, it's showing that your longest credit history is active, and it keeps the length of credit going. You're still able to get out of the rat race because you're still getting out of debt, but you're also keeping your credit score really high, which saves you money in the different areas of your life, again, so you can keep investing and saving more money. The fourth section of your credit score is mix of credit. Mix of credit looks at all the different kinds of credit that you have, like your credit card, a mortgage, a student loan, a car payment. Mix of credit is 10% of your credit score. The credit bureaus wanna see that you can handle different types of credit, different links, different sizes, kind of that you're able to handle all different types of credit as opposed to just one. 
Here's the thing. Maybe you pay your mortgage every month, but if you had revolving debt like a credit card, a payment would be missed, the payment would grow too high to pay, if, for example, you only have a credit card. Something you could do to fix this would be, next time you need to buy a car, get a car with a car loan, but only get it for a very small amount of the car price. Then just pay it off over a short amount of time. Then once you have it paid off, you have something paid off on your credit and you have a mix of credit. Another option is having a rental property. This is a great way to get out of the rat race, plus you get the mix of credit. You technically aren't even making the payments each month, the tenant is. So these are some easy ways to get a mix of credit. And my tip at the end of this video will not only help your credit utilization, get your payments on time, but it will also help you get mix of credit too. The last section of your credit score is new credit. New credit just looks at how recent you got new credit and it's 10% of your credit score. The thing is, maybe you have a credit card and you've had it for like 15 years. You've always paid it on time, but you don't have any new debt. Then the credit bureaus aren't sure if you'd be able to handle new credit. I would just like to put a warning here. Don't think, oh my gosh, this is a super easy way to raise my credit score. I'm gonna go apply for a bunch of credit cards, a car loan, this will help boost my credit score. If you do this, it will most likely signal to the credit bureau that something's not right and that could actually hurt your credit. So new credit is a way to give your credit score a little boost, but I would do it sparingly. Maybe get one card now, one card later. This is another great way to hack the rat race. If you're able to be responsible with credit cards, for example, you can use cards with benefits like travel points, cash back, or cash back invested. Another problem with applying for a bunch of new credit at the same time is you'll have a bunch of inquiries on your credit report which can slightly lower your credit score in the very short term. It's okay to have a few if you're, for example, applying for a mortgage, checking rates at different lenders. New credit is a great way to give your credit a little boost, but just use it responsibly and use a little bit over time. Now I'm gonna share with you my credit score hack that can quickly boost all of these areas. If you have a bunch of revolving credit, like credit cards, and you can't pay them down, and you have a really high credit utilization, or you can't pay it down and you're behind on payments, one thing you can do is get a personal loan or a debt consolidation loan. It is important if you do this that you use a company that doesn't have origination fees. If you're wondering which companies don't have origination fees, then check out my video, the five best personal loan companies with no origination fees. I'm not affiliated with these companies or sponsored by them. These are just companies I've researched. If you get a personal loan and pay off your credit card, which is a revolving debt, this brings your credit utilization way down, maybe even to zero. This will also help you get caught up on any payments you're behind. Additionally, personal loans usually have way lower interest rates, which means you can pay off the debt so much quicker. Doing this also adds mix of credit because it's an installment loan and it also creates new credit. By using this one hack, you can quickly increase your credit score, pay off your debt so much faster. However, I would like to warn you, if you decide to use a personal loan or debt consolidation loan, be sure to check the numbers. Check the interest rates, check how much you're gonna be paying over the long term, check all the fees there are, and compare that to the interest rate you're paying on your credit card just by paying it down naturally. 99% of the time, a personal loan is better, but you always want to check the numbers. If you're interested in learning more about credit card hacks, then you can check out this video called Credit Card Hacks to get an excellent credit score. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos on money, saving, and investing. And I'll see you in the next video.